I recently uh, started a private practice in Chelsea, New York City, and it's mainly focusing on headaches, and a lot of what I see, almost 95%, is migraine. So my approach since um, starting my practice, and I notice this with a lot of my young women patients, which is the major population for migraines, is that they, in addition to the latest in scientific advances and medications want a more of a comprehensive approach. And with something like migraine, where there is a genetic component, but there's also a very huge environmental component, patients are looking for ways that are more natural and, um, and try to get at you know, the main underlying issue with migraines, which is their triggers. So a lot of what I focus on is complementary treatments for uh, migraine and then in general headaches as well and chronic headaches. So I'm excited about the AAN because there, this year especially there's been a huge focus on complementary alternative ways to treat headaches. Um, they have a lot of sessions on neuromodulation um, which you know involves a different way to treat headaches besides taking oral medications or injections. Um, they also have um, sessions almost every day on acupuncture um, which is now shown to be a good way to treat migraines, almost as good as some of the medications that we have. And there's a huge emphasis on holistic treatment, so mindfulness, um, yoga, they do yoga sessions every morning, and not really, and not just for the patients, but for the physicians as well. So there's, you know, this um, integration of wellness just in our everyday um, and how we think about migraines as well as, you know, other neurological diseases. Since I've been in private practice, I th um, that's what I've seen. So with migraine particularly, my patient population is 25 to 45 year old women. And so these are women that are in their reproductive years. And so they would much more prefer to use complementary methods that actually treat their migraines, but also treat their overall health. You know, doing things like mindfulness, yoga, it's definitely going to help your migraines, but it's going to it's healthy, it's a healthy lifestyle. And that's what a lot of these young women are embracing. And that's what we're seeing is, you know, a way to stay healthy um, much, much more than, you know, necessarily taking a pill every day. Um, so a lot of their focus is on what foods should I be eating? And there's a session today actually just on that, which is I plan to attend, um, you know, how to deal with stress because stress is a huge factor for migraines. Um, sleeping, sleeping is another huge factor. Sleeping well, um, finding ways to have good sleep hygiene. Um, and then, you know, and it's not to say that we won't, don't want to include medications because they are also very helpful. We know there's a genetic basis and we know there are certain molecules that are elevated in patients that have migraines. Um, so it is actually very exciting this year. There's the CGRP inhibitors and the antibodies that are becoming much more popular now that we know that they're safe. So it's not to say that we want to exclude that, but I think what we're starting to learn is that you have to take a multimodal approach and you have to take a holistic approach to treating something like migraine that is a chronic disease that affects you know, all parts of your, your body.